Achievement Overview. Hello everyone, this is Globku from Magical Noob here with an Achievement Overview for Thief. We're going over all 37 achievements and you can actually click the achievements in your screen right now if you want to skip the video ahead to a specific achievement. We also have time links in the description to ease your navigation. Let's get started. There are 9 unmissable achievements. You get one after you finish each chapter. Just by playing the game, no matter what you do, you'll get these achievements, so don't worry about them. For Hail of Glass, throw a bottle upwards and shoot it with an arrow. Make sure you save your game before you attempt this, so you can try and miss and load the game and try again. Also, getting the focus upgrade to slow down time can help you nail that shot, but it's really not necessary. Just keep trying until you nail it. Quickly pick a lucky lock. It's pretty simple, requires no upgrades. First, you save your game before picking any lock. Then you pick it and memorize the stick positions that correctly unlock it. Or if you're playing on the PC, same thing, just memorize where you move your mouse. For example, in this clip you're watching, uh, I had to move my mouse upward, then to the right, and then downward. You memorize that, you load your game, and then you do the exact same thing, but quickly, because you already know the positions, and that will unlock you the achievement. Focus on the tasks at hand. For this you need two levels of dexterity. If you don't have enough focus points, go visit the old lady, give her some money, she gives you some focus points and then you can unlock those two levels of dexterity. Then you can use focus to pick a pocket and pick a lock. You don't have to do these two fast or in order, in fact you can pick a pocket in a chapter and then pick a lock in a different chapter, so it's pretty easy to get. As long as you pick a pocket and then pick a lock using focus, that's pretty much it. Happy birthday is also pretty simple once you know what the achievement is, because the description doesn't really help you that much. But all you have to do is snuff 16 candles. If you blow out groups of candles, these only count as one, but they still count. You can get this pretty early, I got it before I even finished chapter 2. It's not that hard of an achievement. Just keep an eye out for candles and blow them out when you see them. You can get health hazard on chapter 3, right after you get in the house of blossoms, as you can see right here on the map. You take a right and then you'll find an opium machine. First thing you want to do is take care of the people in that room. Then you want to go over to the machine and pull the lever. What this will do is overload the opium machine and put everyone in the house of blossoms to sleep. Now there are way over 10 people in the house so you'll get this achievement instantly. I mean, you have to wait a little until they fall asleep, but eh, you get the idea. For one step ahead you obviously need the wire cutter for this, so make sure you buy it from your black market guy. That's the only way to disable traps. I believe the first time you encounter traps is before you start chapter 3 when you are investigating Eren's house and there's like 3 traps there, but they can be found everywhere, not only on missions but also around the city. Just keep an eye out for them and you'll get 10 before you know it. Even if you have already completed the main missions and you still don't have this achievement, just go do the side missions because they take you to a few places with traps, all you have to do is disarm them, it's pretty simple. For sleight of hand, I mean, wow, that is a lot of pockets to pick. Uh, you can track how many pockets you've picked so far by going on the journal, player progression, statistics, then overall. And uh, there are tons of guards with pockets to pick around the city. So even if you finish the game without the 100 pockets picked, you can simply walk around the city picking guards. Also, when you change areas, usually the guards reset, so you can keep picking the same pockets over and over again. It's an infinite amount of pockets to pick and you just need 100. You get Two-Face on Chapter 1, that's the only collectible with an achievement tied to it. And the first mask you'll get because the main mission tells you to, I mean, there's a marker there and the mission doesn't move forward until you pick the first mask. But right after you do it, the mission will tell you to go to the second floor. Uh, but if you don't go to the second floor and just go to the first floor first, you'll find this room with a lot of stuff to steal and there's also a hidden drawer. Uh, you can pickpocket that hidden drawer and you'll find the second mask there. Just be careful because there's a guard patrolling around. So yeah, just don't let him ruin that for you. Other achievements tied to collectibles are All That Glitters, Priceless and What's Yours Is Mine. You should be looking for these based on their location and at the same time finding all the secret areas in order to get finders keepers as well. So here's an annotation to a playlist that will give you all the collectibles you need to find in this game. So whenever you're ready to start that collectible hunting, click this annotation and uh, everything you'll ever want is right, right there, right there. Cash Dispenser uh, requires you to spend 40,000 gold and just like real life, spending the money isn't the problem, but actually getting the 40,000 gold, whew, uh, <laughs> that is a lot of money, even for Thief. By getting all the collectibles, you'll get around 30,000 gold, so that means you only have to find an extra 10,000 during the missions and side missions and stuff, and that's not that hard. 
So my recommendation is go for Cash Dispenser when you actually try to get every single collectible in the game, because these two achievements work very well together. They have that, that chemistry that you can only find on the honeymoon phase, you know? There's also Obsessive Compulsive, which you might get on the way of collecting all that stuff, but uh, this requires you to get all the loot for a specific chapter as well. So not just the collectibles, but all the loot as well. I obviously recommend doing this on chapter 1, since it's, it's a pretty fast level. And uh, if you need help, here's another annotation with a guide to looting everything on this chapter. So just click the annotation if you need uh, help doing Obsessive Compulsive. There's also Old Habits Die Hard and that requires you to find all the stashes in Moira. That's chapter 5. There are only 5 stashes uh, and the first 3 you'll find in the Man's Ward right after you come in. Take a right, climb the thing twice and uh, that's the first one you'll find. Then jump across then uh, you're gonna look not in the first hole, not in the second, but on the third hole. There's the second collectible. Then you jump down, take two lefts, and then the first door to your right should have a room with a hole in it. Go through the hole, climb twice again, and that's the third one in the man's ward. The remaining two are on the women's ward, where you find that broken elevator. First you go down the elevator, you have to shoot a rope arrow uh, in order to climb down. But anyway, after you do that, you crouch, you find this furniture all stacked up, you climb it, you find your collectible number 4, then you get out, go through all the stacked furniture again and up the stairs, take the first door to the left that you see, you're gonna need a key to open that if you haven't already. Behind the furniture, once again, there is a vent, and if you look to the left right after you get on the vent, there is the last one. Old habits die hard. On chapter 5, 5 collectibles, and I've just showed you all of them. Let's jump into side missions. Working overtime and dastardly deeds can be obtained after you complete the game, and they'll actually pay good money if you still need the cash dispenser. But since you can complete these missions at any time, you don't have to worry about missing them or anything. Simply find Basso in the tavern and do all his jobs for dastardly deeds. Some of his jobs will end in clients. Two clients to be more specific. And each one of these guys has three different missions for you. So if you finish those six missions, you'll get working overtime. On the other hand, if you missed Legend in Leather, you'll have to replay the missions. Each chapter has a list of thieving objectives. Usually the chapters have four objectives. One of them will always be to pick every single piece of loot. That is probably the hardest of the thieving objectives, but the other three are usually pretty easy to get. So you've got eight main missions, if you do the three thieving objectives that are easier on those, you get 24 thieving objectives, and then you got the six client missions, those also have four thieving objectives each, and that should nail you your 25 pretty easily. There are a bunch of achievements related to the way you play this game, I have named these achievements Playstyle achievements. If you want to get something to prove in hard times in one playthrough, set your custom difficulty to master. Also, pick the options of no alerts, no kills, no knockouts, and no focus. This will also enable you to achieve Child of the Shadows, a moral victory, and clear headed on the same playthrough. But also keep in mind that these settings alone only get you 365 points, and if you want to get that something to prove achievement, you gotta reach 700. After clearing three missions you'll get mint condition, unless you've been jumping from tall buildings and taking falling damage, so do try not to do that. And also keep in mind that Predatory Drive requires you to finish a game in 15 hours or more. So if you don't have 15 hours of game, which can be tracked once again, if you go to your journal, player progression, statistics, overall, if you don't have those 15 hours yet, before the last boss battle, just leave the game running and go to school, or go to sleep, or go do whatever you, you go and do with your day, and then when you come back, those 15 hours will surely have passed, and you can kill the final boss and get Predatory Drive. Word of caution, this playthrough is not compatible with Legend in Leather and Health Hazard, because these often require you to kill or knock out people. So you need to get these two in a different playthrough. The last achievement in this overview is Modesty Denied. You can pick whatever map you want. I've seen people get this on both Chain and Gain and Special Loot Hunt modes. For both these game modes you'll need a lot of practice and memorization. You, you need to know where the loot is, you need to know what your best route is, you need to know where the guards are. By the way, don't be afraid to knock those guards out. 
Uh, you might lose some points, but you gain much more by being able to run to every place and chain more loot faster. But again, I'll leave you with a couple of annotations that might help you. And uh, these will be in different levels, so you can take your pick. There is no easy way to do this achievement. You gotta practice, practice, practice until you reach that 5 million and be happy you've done all of the achievements in the game and you got bragging rights because you got one hell of a score. But that's gonna be it for this achievement overview. If you need any help whatsoever, please leave a comment, we'll do our best to reply and uh, help you out as best as we can. If this video was helpful in any way, don't forget to click that like button and make sure you subscribe to both TGN and Magical Noob channels. I've been Globku, thank you very much for watching, see you guys next time.